Are you on the RCR mailing list? Never miss a beat of the news and hard-hitting stories you've come to know and love. Stay in the loop. Visit realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week we'll find out what they think about how police appear to be monitoring hate speech and tipping up at people's houses asking about mean tweets. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you back. Uh, thanks, Cam. Good to be back. Just one second. There. How are you this day? I'm fantastic. And yourself? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Pretty good. All is well. And a lovely sunny day. Yeah, beautiful. Now, you might have seen some stuff going on in the UK with people that are being arrested for daring to tell the truth on things like Twitter or X, Facebook, and the police are coming around and knocking on their doors and arresting them for putting mean comments out uh, on social media. The Free Speech Union in New Zealand has also highlighted that the New Zealand police seem to have a hate speech policy in place with training for police officers to do, well, exactly the same thing. And earlier today on the show, I spoke to a guy that uh, had been doorstepped by the police at, at dinner time for precisely this reason. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on the police policing mean tweets. Well, I'm really interested in where this stems from because the, you talk to the average police officer and they're just normal blokes that kid round and e- even some of them like a bit of a blue and hence they join the police so that it's sanctioned when people get out of hand, they can, you know, they have a bit of fun. They're just normal Kiwi blokes. They're not thinking, I've got an idea, I've had hurty feelings. They don't think about that. They just think it's all a bit of a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh. Now, when you've got people that, um, that uh, someone's driving an agenda that says, oh, if I get my feelings hurt, then something's happened and, and, and we all have to, whatever. So... You can't say that um, this this bloke who was a was Barry is now Mary, you know. Or you can't point out the obvious that um, when a when a male um, X Y chromosome bashes a female in the head, and um, we call it boxing, and he's really a she. And like the Olympics, I thought were disgraceful mm. with the um, boxing. And, and now we're getting this coming into New Zealand. Who's driving this rubbish agenda? Because it's that's not how that's not the New Zealand way. That's not how we think. So, so if you've got hurty feelings, you know the old sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. We all grew up with that, and now we're getting all the stupidity that oh, you've said something to offend the Muslim faith. Or you've said something about fat people. Or you've said something about black people. Or you've said something about thick people. And in the end, you just think, well, what can you say? And and, I, and I've always just said how I see things. And many people thank me for my candor. But now it's look like, looking like I'm going to be arrested. Well, if we can't get the, the New Zealand government, Luxon and Peters and that sort of thing, to say this is not how we react, um, then we will be way worse off for it. It's almost like people have forgotten sticks and stones. You know, I had that drummed into me. I can remember um, my brother coming home from school and saying somebody said something mean to him and, you know, mum, you need to do something about it. And she said, don't worry about it, he's a dick. And, and it's like mm. people have forgotten that these are just words and and they've got this sort of victim mentality. And worse than that, there seems to be a system in place that, can be used to bully people for saying mean things by reporting them to the police or having them doorstepped to have a chat with them about a mean tweet. Now, in our Bill of Rights, you're allowed to impart any uh, opinion, uh, any knowledge, and you've got a right to receive that knowledge um, that you wish to receive without anybody impinging it. And, and in my world... Offence can only be taken, not given. And so if someone gets offended, that's the, that's mm. a problem, not a me problem. Yeah, well, that's a choice, isn't it? Like, I used to be slightly built, and different members of our family would call me Skell, short for skeleton, 
and tin, short for, you know, skinny as, as a tin man and rake and all this sort of thing. And uh, in fact, one of my nicknames was Pop for Pop River because I was so thin. I'm mm. 130 kilos now, so I, I dream about having such insults. But oh. at the time, all these sort of hurt a bit, I thought, and I'm thinking, actually, the people that are saying it to me are overweight. They wish they were like me. And I took myself in hand and thought, don't be such a girl. Um, you can, if someone sees something that is likely to give you hooty feelings, add an up. We don't need stupidity. And, and I don't care. You can say anything you like to me. I mean, you can call me. What does it say? You can call me anything you like. Just don't call me late for a meal. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, um, I always say to people, I get people all the time on, on Twitter calling me fat so or whatever, thinking it's an insult. And I just usually reply to them, well, you need a big hammer to drive a long nail, and I never hear back from them. Oh, I do like that as a saying, to be fair. And, um, like, when, when you look at who, who these people are that are taking you to court, it's starting at, um, I see that Trudeau doesn't like people criticising him. I see Jordan Peterson, because he wasn't woke enough, has now had the Supreme Court of Canada telling me he has to go for DEI training. Who's the fool that's going to take on that and train him? And he said to a few people, I'm not threatening you, but this is a game you really don't want to play. Don't take the job of trying to train me because it will be televised and you'll look like a prat. And even saying that, I imagine he's, he's up for some trouble. But he's saying, yep, if you want to take my ability to practice psychology away, then because... He, he hasn't, see the people that complained about him have never been a client, they've never been near him, they have hurt feelings on someone else's behalf. And I think that's where all these hurty feelings go. If you say to me, did I hurt your feelings? The answer is no. But you might have hurt someone's feelings, overheard this, so I'm complaining on behalf of a straw man. Now, when you talk to people that are just, overweight, for example, yeah. they've actually learned to cope with insults about being overweight so that it hardly affects them. Now, they may, one way of coping, maybe just don't be around those people. Yep. Another way of coping is, like you say, come up with something, like, you probably find this hard to believe, but people have often criticised me for my high testosterone levels, which has caused me to be bald. And so they call me, have bald jokes about me. Well, I think some of them are bloody funny. I think that, you know, I say to people, you know, um, I've decided to um, paint rabbits on my head. Why is yeah. that? Well, they're from a distance, they might look like hairs. <laughs> and, and so, we, we, look, most people aren't out to be hurtful. They're just saying, I don't like myself today, so I'm going to insult you and make you feel worse about you. Well, it's hardly, let's, um, let's have the police out on the, on the strength of that. I mean, it defies belief. If... If they've got things like in um, a, some of the Islamic countries, they're thinking of lowering the age of consent to get married to nine, wouldn't be that be something that would be more interesting for them to go after than whether or not I said something about a minority group that they didn't care about, but yeah. someone's been offended on behalf of them? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right, and I think it it comes down to a couple of things. It comes down to the fact that we've become humorless, and you know, if you think to our Monday lunches with the boys, it is wall to wall sledging, yeah. right? You, you come late, you get sledged. You go early, you get sledged. You take a phone call in the in the lunch, you get sledged. You say something stupid, you just get torn yeah. apart, and you either cope or you don't come. But those who cope have a great time. Uh, and we've like lost that. And the second thing is, is we've lost the ability, or, or people seem afraid to challenge people on their delusions. And you know, one of the best ones I ever saw was when Ben Shapiro was on a on a uh, on a show with a transgender person, and kept calling, uh, kept calling him him, and he got threatened to, you know, he's going to get a hiding from this person, and he said, what? Well, your feelings don't outweigh my facts. And and that's the reality of the situation. There's a whole lot of lunatic um, 
beliefs out there. And for some reason, we're not allowed to point at them and laugh uproariously and say, you, you, you're, you're deluded, man. You know, when you actually say to someone, you're actually deluded. Mm. Now they get offended and they're going to sick the police on you. Grow up. Well, in Britain, in times gone by, if you be polite to somebody, it, you're not really a good mate. Unless you're sledging them a bit from time to time, mm. that's the mean show their love by teasing one another. Because if, if I don't know you well enough to tease, then I'll be polite to you, but you're probably insufferable. But if I'm teasing you, it's, it's because this is how mean and direct. Now, my wife often says to me, Oh, hanging out with you guys is brutal when I hear some of the conversations that may or may not have gone down. And our, when she hangs out with her, her girlfriends, they're all very nice to one another. But, but in reality, when a woman stabs you in the back, it's way worse than when the man's teasing you, you know? Like, women have got a, a degree of nastiness, whereas men have got a degree of openness. Yeah. And, um, like, women go for character assassination, men bash you in the face. And hence, we can be friends later because we happen to get that thing sorted. And so um, I just look at them thinking, some of this stuff, when the governments go crazy, then who knows what's the right thing to say. If you ask them, even any of our politicians now, what is a woman? They all could have told you 20 years ago what a woman is. If you ask them now, it's a trick question. Oh, you're trying to make this, you're trying to, you know, they can't even tell you what a woman is. And then, then they're saying, but... but um, we're saying this this is definitely a woman. Well, it's a man, and it's at a boxing tournament. Yeah. And so all these things, I just look at them thinking, it's crazy stuff, and when the police start getting involved, when you're weaponizing the power of the state against the citizens, we're saying you've had hurty language, and, you're, and I'm, feeling, I'm feeling all hurty and whatever. I just think, get a life. Well, all I think of is dry your eyes. You know, here's a box of tissues. What's the solution to this? Just mm. a quick one before you go, Paul. What's uh, What do you think the solution is? Is this a case of have a cup of cement or something similar? Well, absolutely. You take a Viagra and harden up a bit. But the point that I'm making here is the police are not thinking, I've got an idea, let's go and terrorise the systems of me. Someone in a government department has come up with this as a good idea, so let's do this. And they've been listening to something stupid like the WHO or the... W- it's all designed to create anarchy amongst the citizenry so that then they can control us more. So there's a problem here. That's a, the trouble with the police too, is that you know, when you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yes, Exactly. And, and, and the police have only a few tools in their kit. It starts off in um, having a chat, then it starts with detaining you, and then it carries on uh, up the escalation path and may or may not involve tasers and all sorts of other things, all because somebody perceived something to be hurty. And that is, again, that's a them problem, not a you problem. Yes, but also we need to be schooled that when the police come down to the door, the questions are, are you going to arrest me? Are you charging me? Am I... Shut the door. It used to be they were your friend. You could ask them on the way home and all sorts of things. Now, any interaction you have with them, in my view, is best... Like, if they come to your place, they're not coming because they want to go fishing. They're coming because they believe that you've done something wrong. So the questions to get out quickly are, am I under arrest? Do I need counsel? Are you going to charge me with anything? Okay, goodbye. Shut the door. Yep. Am I being detained? Am I under arrest? Am I being charged? Simple stuff. Just say that. If the answer is negative to all of those, it's exactly what you do. You shut the door and don't answer it again. I mean, I've done that to police mm. at my house, and I'm sure you've done it too. I mean, I, I used to be, be a G-man, you know. I used to think the police could do no wrong. Well, that ended quite some time ago for me. Yes. Well, any time I've gone to the police with someone who's committed a crime against either me or my property, it's not long before I become the defendant. That's how they treat me. And I'm some thinking, right. So I now have changed my opinion of them. We have to have them. We need law and order. But in the end, sometimes they are looking for the easy targets. And let me tell you what an easy target looks like, white middle-aged male. 
Yeah. White we're middle aged male who goes to church, even better. Yep. All right, Paul, thanks for your views on that. We'll talk again next week. Well, good to take care. Bye for now. Thank you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good to have you back. How are you today, Cam? I'm fantastic, as always, but you know the rules on that. Excellent. <laughs> Pleased to hear that. Hey, uh, well, you might not be so fantastic if you made some naughty comments on social media. Well, that's right. I mean, you would have heard earlier talking to Gareth about the police turning up and threatening him with removal of his firearms if he wasn't a fit and proper person because he said some mean tweets on Twitter. And uh, we've seen this in the, Uni- in the United Kingdom, you know, grannies and uh, people, you know, uh, other pensioners being uh, arrested for things on social media. And it seems it's creeping its way into New Zealand society. What are your thoughts on that? I'm going to throw a brickbat at the police. What the hell are they thinking? They are doing something that's ultra vires. It's above the law. Where is this coming from? And if it's coming from Costa, the commissioner, that has got to stop. And that's up to Mitchell, the minister, to put his foot down. Now, I'm really sorry, but... Shouldn't the police be spending their time and efforts on crimes that have real victims, crimes of violence, crimes of theft? Shouldn't they be spending their time on that? And and yet they're busy snooping, chasing around, chasing down someone who might or might not have offended someone. Well, didums, I say to that. Get the police back on track, Minister Mitchell. Well, in, in the um, in the interaction that Gareth had with the police, this police constable said to him, you know, you understand your uh, uh, responsibilities uh, as a firearms licence holder, as a fit and proper person, and your obligations as a fit and proper person. And he wisely said, yes, but so what? Uh, I've Being a firearms licence owner myself and somebody who's been confronted by the police, None of what that constable said is actually in the law. There's no definition of a fit and proper person. Uh, There's no definition even of a collector in the the Arms Act. And yet she's talking about obligations which also aren't in the Arms Act or any other act for that matter. And they're like making it up. And at the same time, they're standing there with their tasers, glocks on their hip, uh, ready to go. They're making it up. and they're making it up just for a few comments on Twitter. I mean, what the hell has happened to the police? We are seeing in this incident a really concrete example of the two-tier policing that has happened in in the UK. And it hasn't ended well in the UK, and it's not going to end well here. The police need to pull their heads out of stuff that doesn't concern them. And let's be quite honest. Free speech is free speech. And if you um, say something that is inciting a criminal act or, or something else, then there's room to act, for the police to act. But if you would just say something that upsets someone, well, grow up. Didums to you. And, and let's have a robust debate. And the police should not be involved in this. Where is the law? There is no hate speech law in New Zealand. So what is going on in the police? There's no hate speech law. There's no fit and proper person obligations in any law. And yet the police, what we're seeing here is the police making stuff up that isn't in the law in order to entrap somebody. They're they're hoping... No, they're they're threatening someone. They're, they're, They're actually threatening someone. So the police are threatening someone with something that's totally made up for something that... There is no law against doing. It's just beginning to sound like a clown show. Well, but I think that they're doing it on purpose because firearms owners don't want to lose their guns. And so when you get two police officers turn up and start talking about you losing your guns, all of a sudden your sphincter starts twitching a little bit and you start minding your people. I think, I think that's true. And you have to ask yourself, who was the sergeant that was involved with those police officers? Because I tell you what, there needs to be some serious butt-kicking 
Uh, the two officers that turned up should have known better. The sergeant that deployed them should have known better. There needs to be some serious butt-kicking done in the police. And if the butt-kicking goes all the way to Cuddles Costa, the commissioner, well, so be it. He needs to actually get things in hand and say to the police, hey, guys, we're going to concentrate on the basics here. We're going to actually concentrate on going after criminals. You know those people who wear the uh, Beagle Boys black masks and um, run around robbing banks and and committing violent acts? You know those people? Okay, they're a little bit more difficult to chase after than the law-abiding firearms owners, but that's the police's job, to chase criminals. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? is the criminals actually are easy to identify. They're usually wearing colours or a patch uh, uh, or or are lurking around where they shouldn't have been in in the wee small hours. It's kind of easy. Yeah, but the problem is the police are are, are frightened. They don't want to go near them because they might get beaten up. Uh, Well, you know, grow a pair, do your job. For heaven's sake, stop um, assaulting and um, intimidating and threatening law-abiding citizens. What's going on? No, and that's the thing, is firearms owners are law-abiding citizens. We actually are fit and proper per- persons because we've got a firearms licence. Now, sure, there's a few right. out there, so that's fine, but but don't go and shake down someone because of some mean tweets. I mean, that's pathetic, but but that's what's happening, and that's the slippery slope that we're heading down because there aren't people like you or me or, or, or in this case, Gareth, who are prepared to say to the police, no, go away, leave. And you have perfect, if they're not charging you, if they're not detaining you, if they're not arresting you, you are fully within your rights to say to them, no, you're not coming into my house. You don't have a warrant. You can leave. And if it you. It makes my blood them, boil. No, oh, it does. It makes my blood boil too, because. I know how they do this. I've I've had it done to me. You've had it done to you. This is what they do. They like they ring up and they say, "Oh, um, we've got a firearm on your license, and it's serial number such and such." And you go, "No, I don't." They go, "Yes, you do." And right. it's this type of firearm. You go, "Well, that's a serial number for a, a Ruger." But then they argue with you, and then the next minute you're getting a notice from them saying. You need to correct something. Or they take all your guns, they lose the court case, they hand them all back and they send you a letter giving you a notification not to do it again. But you never did anything in the first place. Correct. And you see, this is where policing has gone wrong in New Zealand. Under the Ardern socialist regime, the police were just let off the leash. They decided that they were above the law. They could make up the the rules. Actually... The police have to follow the law, and they have to do a darn sight better job at following the law than you or I might do, because actually that's their job. But the reality is the New Zealand police are a mess, and they are just so... um, It's infuriating. They're just going about their business, threatening and intimidating law-abiding citizens and seemingly ignoring the criminals. It's just infuriating. Yeah, it seems that you can get in more trouble for a mean tweet than you can in glassing somebody at a pub. Or or a couple of speeding tickets. My gosh, don't mention the speeding tickets. That's another big red button on my back. Don't even start me on that. The police <laughs> are just out of control. They certainly are. All right, Miles, thanks for your input on that. Uh, the listeners will be in no uncertain knowledge that uh, you and I, although formerly G-men, are no longer fans of the constabulary. Correct. Um, you have a good day, Cam. We'll catch you later. Thanks, Miles. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Hello, Cam. How's things? I remembered your name. <laughs> Oh, well, we're equal there, aren't we? We are. We are. Mm -hmm. Now, have you been following the news of the stuff that's happening in the UK with all these protests and how some people have been, you know, putting things on Twitter or X or Facebook and had the constables coming up and knocking on the door and saying, um, well, we're arresting you because that's hate speech. 
And now we've got a case on, on just, you know, earlier on the show had somebody on, on the phone who had a, exactly the same sort of thing happen here in New Zealand. That the two police turned up at 6.30, knocked on his door while he was feeding the five kids that he's got and uh, wanted to have a wee chat about what he's been putting on X. Do you, do you think the police should be policing comments on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, TikTok, whatever they are? You probably don't use too many of those, but do you think the police should be bothering with that or do you think they should actually go and catch some criminals? Well, definitely they shouldn't be doing it, but I can see that they will be doing it. Um, and the trust in the police is absolutely rock bottom for a very good reason. Um in my time, I've gone from the local cop who was trusted and lived in the area and knew everybody to a pair of cops on the beat who we still trusted and look forward to seeing. And now there's no cops in sight. But they're evidently there, um, and they will definitely in the future be busy um, looking online for crimes, which is a pretty easy thing to do, isn't it? Well, they're not going to get fit um, chasing social media warriors, are they? No, they're not. But I can see that it's going to happen. Um, and I think that the tone of trust in the police force actually began its slide. Um, this is a pretty biased comment, but when traffic cops uh, joined the force, I can recall when that happened, we were all quite scared of the traffic cops. Um, for one very good reason, which relates to this. They could pull you over for suspicion of an irregularity, and they often did. Yeah. don't know if you remember those times, but they did. They had a different coloured car, so, you know, you knew who you were dealing with. And if they pulled you over, you know, you sort of froze with fear, and they could look all around your vehicle and do whatever they liked. Mm. So um, when they joined the police force, I think they took that, little bit of mistrust with them uh, doesn't all go well for the future of the police force because in more recent times they've lost so much trust anyway uh, with all the ideology and protecting people who are actually the criminals in the scene. Um, so I don't think it's a very good future for us um, with the police. But <clears throat> I don't know if you've looked at that Royal Commission of Inquiry into the mosque attack, have you? I have. Well, it has recommendations in there that show a definite interest in training the police in hate speech, both on and offline. That's right. This is in our backyard. Yep, that's what the Free mm. Speech Union has been fighting against, and that's why the, I, I had on this show this week two people to talk about how that impacts the this policy that the police have rolled out to monitor social media because of this Royal Commission of Inquiry. But it's like they've ignored the other recommendations in the Commission of Inquiry, the one that scolded the police for actually failing in the vetting processes in the first place. It's like, no, no, we, we social media is where it's all at. We need to go and beat up these grannies and, and pensioners that have got X accounts and Facebook that's far more important than, oh, I don't know, stopping ram raids or, um, you know, stopping violence uh, in the streets. Uh, no, we're going to go around and we're going to shake people down uh, in the evening when they're, you know, sitting in front of their TV or enjoying some relaxation. That's when we'll go and knock on the door. All for something that's actually not in the law. There is no law. Well, about it will be. Well, 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 it, it, will, it will be. It won't be if we people like you and I stand up and say, no, we're not prepared for you to do this. We don't accept that this is appropriate. I mean, we know that the Labour Party and the Greens were, you know, all for it. Uh, we had a change of government that said, no, we're going to cancel those hate speech laws. But you're right, like Rust, it never sleeps. These, these woke uh, people with their ideology, they're going to try again. And, and so we have to make sure that people are equipped with the right responses to tell people, politicians especially, we don't want you to do this, and if you do that, you're going to lose your job. Yeah, well, the hardest thing for, if we say us, because we're obviously anti this, you and I, mm. um, the hardest thing to get, get through is, is the media, because 
they, they just will not uh, print or record the side of the argument that we're talking about. They'll only print or um, the, the other side of the argument, which is um, how this will help everybody and how lovely it is for minority groups, etc., etc., etc. And in the course of this, what actually is hate speech? If you read the recommendations, it's just about anything that insults anyone. Yeah, I mean, basically, someone can have hurty feelings. That's considered to be hate speech. You call someone fatso or fatty. Um, and now all of a sudden you have the police feeling your collar because um, some, you know, heifer has got upset that you've um, insulted their weight when the evidence is there right. for us. That's absolutely right. Um, and this ideology thing goes far and wide. <clears throat> it covers everything. It covers all the minority groups, um, you know, genders, race, uh, sex, uh, as you say, weight, just, just absolutely anything that somebody might take offence to. So this is actually very worrying. Um, so what do we do? Stop. They, they, they have said in, in that uh, report, which worries me, I think I'm quite good at spotting these tiny little uh, drops of information, um, because they say there is value and limiting the escalation from hate speech to hate crime. That's based on a um, a review which was actually done in London um, that decided that online hate can begin on social media and migrate into the physical world. Well, <clears throat> we actually know that, and we saw it with the mosque attack, and who who picked that up anyway? How did that happen? Because that fellow had heaps of um, hate stuff online and nobody seemed to notice it or anything. Uh, the police were not very good in the incident itself. Um, and yet they've used that to develop this idea that the police should be running around sticking their noses in, into our social media. Mm. Um, and then further on they say that since... 2019, the police have been recording hate crime and it recommends training and effectiveness of systems and it says that hate crime recording has been inconsistent so far due to limited training. So here they are training in online hate speech. Yep. And, and no, there are no laws, but you can see... What they're looking at, they're looking at the future, and they're pretty confident that this is going to come through, aren't they? It's just another way to um, to have them control the masses. Be careful what you say. You might end up in the back of a paddy wagon or, or handcuffed in the back of a police vehicle um, for the high crime of saying something hurty to somebody. And I think it actually goes as far as uh, not only saying something hurty, but agreeing with somebody else who, who's saying something hurty. Yeah, but clicking like or giving it a thumbs up or a heart symbol or something similar, you know, that, that's the pernicious way that, that it goes. And, of course, you end up with people being silenced um, when they've actually done nothing wrong other than offend some unusually an anonymous person who has taken great umbrage at something that somebody said. Uh, like it's, you know, like that's important. It, it, my view it is is that if you don't like what people are saying on social media, don't go. No, well, of course, they haven't learned to be resilient, these people. Um, I had hoped that that would be the new big industry, uh, teaching resilience, but it doesn't seem to have happened uh, because I think it creates huge groups of victims and that suits everybody, really. Uh, I don't think that the world likes people to be resilient these days. But I, I think the police are going to go after the gun owners under the guise of online hate speech. That seems That's to be exactly what's what they're likely doing. to happen. That's yeah. exactly what they're doing. I'm um, waiting to knock on the door myself because uh, I um, might hurt somebody's feelings. But they know that if they do knock on my door, that they're going to get famous. And they don't really like that, so they kind of don't bother me. 
but there's plenty of other people out there that they can go and intimidate uh, and will intimidate because, well, they're bullies, really. I know, and they're not as brave as they used to be. Um, and the thing is, they can't go after unregistered gun owners, who's the ones that they should go after, because they don't know who they are. No, but it, um, it's, it's all the fault of the licensed gun owners, apparently, according to the police union. It's all our fault. Even though the statistics and the, and the maths don't uh, support them on that, that's what they say anyway. And, of course, the media, uh, the mainstream media dutifully reports that uh, as though it's a fact. Um, but that's exactly what, what they are doing. They're going up to firearms owners saying, we've seen you've said something mean on uh, on X or Facebook and somebody's upset about that. And, by the way, do you realise if you do that that you could lose your firearms licence? Despite the fact that there's no law um, that would allow them to do that. This is a made-up thing that the police are doing and it's illegal, but th that's what they're doing. And, and we've got video of it um, happening right here in New Zealand. I know, it's terrible. But, and, of course, it's pretty hard to get the specific um, data on, you know, what the gun-related incidents actually are, um, you know, so you can compare year by year. But certainly from how it seems to me, I have never seen or heard of so many um, shootings and gun-related incidents since the guns were confiscated and subsequently licensed after the mosque attack. Uh, seems to be, you know, a regular weekly event for some, some sort of shooting. But as I said, those incidents, I'd be very interested to see statistics of how many of those were by registered gun owners or licensed. I can tell you, none. Uh, none. 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 So there you go. Um, that proves the point. These people are criminals. Right, they 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 don't yes. have firearms licenses. They have illegal firearms, and the a register and changes to the gun laws won't affect them because they're criminals. So so it's not going to happen. And so the, the gun laws and any changes that the police and everybody else wants to foist on people are only going to affect law-abiding citizens, and not the criminals. And at the same time, they're policing the firearms owners using hate speech or social media uh, when the problem is actually not with those people. The problem is out there with rat bags that are violent and criminals, but they don't seem to want to deal with those. No, they want control, as you said before. They want control of the masses. They're not worried about the criminals. And I personally, I think, like a lot of things, it's a thin end of the wedge. And uh, I also think Orwell's 1984, here we come because this is about mass control for sure. Well, I mean, that's the thing, is that politicians around the world during COVID picked up 1984 uh, and used it as a manual rather than a warning. Well, you'd have to think that would be dead right. You would just have to. It's just just going down the same pathway, uh, which is pretty scary for the likes of us. But, yes, we do have to stand up. But the thing is to how you get the message through the media uh, because they're really the tool for whoever runs the show. Yeah. The only solution is to destroy the media and to support media like Reality Check Radio, uh, like shows like The Crunch and, and everybody else who, who works for Reality Check Radio because we're not afraid to have these discussions. Uh, we're not going to get upset because somebody disagrees with us or anything like that, and and it's it's so important to support us and and not them, basically. Well, it is. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to grow fairly slow, or slower than I would like. I'd like it, you know, to be all over in in one day. But um, slowly, Reality Check Radio is increasing its reach. Yep. Uh, every time they have a politician on from the other side. Um, although that's not very pleasant to endure, it does mean that some of their, at least some of their friends and family will listen to the interview subsequently. So, yeah, that, that just bring, brings uh, a few more in, I think. I think they're very clever, those three girls at the top. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty clever. We've got some clever people working for us. Anyway, that's all we've got time yeah. for today, Lindley. So thank you so much for, 
for your input, and we'll talk again next week. Thanks, Cam. Take care. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back. G'day, Cameron. How are you this week? I'm fantastic, as usual. What about yourself? I'm okay. Just bearing up under the strain of a tax-heavy economy. What have you got for me this week, anyway, Cam? Uh, You've probably seen the protests in the UK, and then as a result of those protests, people who had tweeted about it or shared a tweet uh, on on X uh, about Tommy Robertson or, or putting their own opinion out there, getting the police to come around and arrest them. And then on today's show, earlier on, we had um, we had Gareth talking about uh, him getting doorstep by the police uh, for the similar sort of thing. He wasn't arrested at this stage, uh, but two constables came around with tasers and you know wanted to have a wee chat with him. Uh, they didn't want to detain him or arrest him, and so he shut the door and told them to go away. But we've got this situation where we seem to have the police now, uh, the Free Speech Union, for example, has also um, found out that the police have this uh, training scheme to teach their people about hate speech, how to recognise it and how to go and deal with it. So I think we're heading down the same path as the UK here, and I'm not sure we want to have that. But I'm interested in your views on that. I think it's horrifying, to be honest. I think that I mean, free speech obviously carries responsibilities of no hate speech or inciting violence, but just spewing out rubbish on X or Twitter is really pretty harmless. And yet to have the police showing up over it is insane. How do they even find the person? Well, I mean, that raises a whole lot of new questions, like how how did they find out that an anonymous Twitter account was his? Did they breach his privacy? No, I saw the case you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. and that's yeah. They threatened with his firearms license, so they looked up. They knew he had firearms. Obviously, yep. they can look that up. But it's just, it's really premeditated. And I, I've seen that guy's tweets. I, I just don't think he's, he's more just full of bluster. There's no real, well, he, you know, he a few goes at me, you know, um, calling things out, which he's entitled to do. He, everyone has an opinion. They're, they're kind of like you need a few people to have a go at you, mate, to bring you down a peg or two. Yeah, and, and it's what? Um, but but to get visited by the police and then for them to suggest that he's not meeting his obligations as a fit and proper person and could lose his firearms and his licence, I think is a step way too far, mainly because they've got no legal avenue to do that. Yeah, well, that's where it gets all murky, right? Because who makes the rules on what is good and proper to say? We know who will end up making the rules if it happens the woke politicians, because mm. the left say a lot of awful stuff as well. You know, like, I've seen replies to David Seymour's like, death threats and all sorts of stuff. Be, they don't get visited. Well, it's like people... You, know, you should see the hate that Shane Jones gets. Holy crap. I, I get people all the time sledge me and say, oh, shut up, fat so, or, you know, why are you sitting there, you fat, you know, lump of lard... And they're saying, well, this oh, technically oh, oh. could all be, you know, hate speech. But I, I just either don't reply to them or I give them a, you know, reply something like, you know, well, you know, you need a big hammer to drive a long nail. And it kind of shuts them up. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the whole problem is who makes the rules. That's where the problem is. That's why free speech just has to be absolute because as soon as you try and pigeonhole it into what's okay and what's not, it's always going to come from some sort of angle and we. Both sides don't want the other side to make the rules, right? Yeah, I mean, sure, you can't incite violence. You can't say to someone, why don't you go and get a knife and stab yourself or hang yourself? You can't say anything like that. That is against the law. It's not in the law. Yeah, I agree with that. You shouldn't have to do that. It's fine. No, that's right. You, you, you You can't incite violence. There is a law for that, and that's what the police should be enforcing, not whether somebody's offended about something or their nose is out of joint because, you know, of a, a snarky comment on on social media. It's it's just ridiculous. I know. Did you see on Tuesday that Elon Musk interviewed Trump on Spaces and the EU commissioner threatened Elon with um, trying to limit what they say to stop he didn't information want from going to yeah, he didn't want to have the EU commissioner didn't want to have Trump on 
um, he's trying to tell a private company based in the United States who he can have, who he can have, and who he can platform. Yeah. Yeah, this is just outrageous. Uh, but it didn't work because apparently about three million people um, tuned into it and watched it. Yeah, it's massive. And then now the mainstream media absolutely dissing it. You know, I've seen the saying it was a horror show, but massive. Like, the disconnect from the media in reality is just growing chasm by chasm. Did you see this week that the Herald's not going to publish any more front page advertising from the. Yeah, uh, all because a couple of um, uppity, stroppy, you know, Maori agitators threatened them, basically. You know, um, people like Matthew Tukaki, we all know his CV is, you know, as, as honest as a, as a Herald article, right? But, but it, it was him and the Maori party basically stamping their feet, doing a war dance. And the Herald's now caved and said, oh, no, we're not going to have um, any adver advertisements from people that other people might be upset about. Well, the, the Herald doesn't deserve to be in business any longer. Well, what's, what's wrong with their, you know, the... Uh, uh, sorry, who's the crowd? I've forgotten the name. The, um... Hobson's Pledge. Yeah, the, what, what's, what's wrong with Hobson's Pledge money? I read the original ad. There's no swear words. It was nothing offensive. It just stated stuff that obviously a lot of people disagree with, but it wasn't... Why don't they place a bigger ad that is counters it? What's well, this silencing in this country? It's insane. But that's exactly the Herald needs the money. Why Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they do a front page ad countering it? That's why we have a debate. Yeah. Uh, but but and not, then some um, journalists counter the ad in, in, in the editorial. Like this is but now it's silenced. And so the Hobson's pledge money is going to go elsewhere. They won't stop. And then. Just going to polarise more. They should have a counterbalance in the paper, and I think that the deplatforming is just horrendous. And that's why we need to fight for free speech because we know which side wants to control it. Well, the funny thing is, it and used to be the left that was all in favour of free speech. It used to be the left <laughs> that protected human rights, and you know, now it's the left wing <laughs> that wants to silence, uh, blacklist, deplatform. Uh, Censor, uh, we we need yeah. to know to these censorious. Um, well, we've discussed this in the past. It, it, the left and right spectrum isn't a line; it's more of a horseshoe. The further left you go, the more fascist and right wing you become. That's what's happened. It's just screwed around. It's very bizarre. The but last five years has been so strange. It's totally bizarre, but that's the world we live in. <laughs> where where people can say. Uh, blokes can say, uh, you know, I want to be called Shirley now, and um, and I'm a woman. You know, and, and we all know that it's it's stupid. But if you say, sorry, mate, we're not going to entertain your delusion, now you're some sort of, you know, phobe. They give you some sort of uh, nickname that says that you can't have an opinion that someone who holds those beliefs is ridiculous or whatever. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a whole lot of people uh, out there who who are trans before all of this became a fad that just got on with their lives. I used to have a customer um, who who advertised um, with me uh, who was uh, a trans person. Uh, I just dealt with uh, her respectfully. We didn't need to have it shoved down our throats. But now it's shoved down their throats, you're getting a reaction. And for some reason, um, we're not allowed to have a reaction. We ha we, we're being implored to entertain people's delusions. Yep, and it always comes with a big slice of socialism, mate. Everything. It's well, that's that, how they keep everybody and, and fighting against each other. Yeah, it's um, when does the Empress close? It, when does the kid shout, the Empress got no clothes, and it all just falls away, and everyone just returns back to 2010 when things are you know, not so bizarre? Well, I think it was kind of around then. There was ridiculous stuff going on back then. But well, I guess it's always been like your grandfather thought stuff was ridiculous in 1967, mate. Yeah, but but yeah. When, they, when they did think it was ridiculous, they said it, and no one got upset. They went, oh, <laughs> that's just Bob, um, you know, having his opinion. And, it, and it's like we're not allowed to have opinions, or, or there's this committee that approves the opinions. But even if you go <laughs> along with the scary, opinion, even if you go along with the approved opinion, there'll be another committee saying, well, no, we've revised that now, and um, now you're in trouble because even though we revised it and we didn't notify you of that, um, 
it still stands. And so then you hung for that. Yeah, you'll be first at the witch's stake, you know, Slater. Probably, <laughs> but they'll have to come for me and my firearms first, so, you know. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Cam. Thanks for your call, Jimmy, and thanks. we'll see you again next week. Thanks, mate. Cheers. It's always interesting to see what the person on the street thinks, and today was no different. We should be concerned at recent developments in the UK and here. My baddies know it, you know it, but it seems the only people who don't know it or don't want to know it are the police and woke parliamentarians. Tell us your thoughts on this important topic by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.